I tell you what, as far as Seven Dust is concerned, this could possibly be the best thing that has ever happened for us, yo. Thank you so much. While the 1969 anniversary of Woodstock is coming up, folks a little bit younger are recalling the 30th anniversary concert held in upstate New York. With heavy rock being all the rage, literally, by 1999, several of those heavy bands allegedly set the stage for many problems at that year's festival. Woodstock 99 was famous for assaults during Limp Biscuits set and for a riot that broke out during the Red Hot Chili Peppers' performance with fans setting fires, looting concession stands, and the smashing of portable ATMs. While the causes of the riots are still up for debate, one legendary performance was lost. Seven Dust was performing at the other end of the main stage on what effectively was 1B. With hordes of people gathered to catch them, Seven Dust had a seemingly endless sea of people jumping in rhythm to their track, Rumblefish. Drummer Morgan Rose talked about the mindset going into Woodstock 99. All we were thinking about really was, this is one of those defining moments that can make or break your career. And we were warned, we were like, listen, if you go up there and you fail in front of 170,000 people just that are in the crowd, forget the, you know, the actual you know, documentation of it, if you fail in front of that many people in one, one spot with the world watching, your career could be done. And on the other hand, if you crush it, you could write your ticket. I remember that day pulling into the, to the grounds and it was disgusting, you know, it was like those shit everywhere and it was piss everywhere and people were sleeping in their own defecation. It was just awful. And everyone was asleep. It was like eight or nine in the morning. And uh, I was just walking around. I'm walking around Woodstock. And uh, I was just like looking around going, this is crazy, man. I'm going to play Woodstock today. I'd never played in front of that many people, but it was about 70,000 people. And it just looked like miles of people. And then we started playing, and the minute we started playing, you started seeing over this hill, it was coming. It looked like a bomb had gone off, you know? And I mean, people running full steam, and they looked like ants, but it was just starting to fill like this. And uh, it was Jewel playing on the other stage. And then when we started, all the people, you know, bolted on her and came over to us. He also talked about what he remembered from the events that led to Woodstock 99's infamous reputation. That was a uh, that was a like a ticking time bomb for everybody around. It was for the crowd. It was for us. It was you know I think that we were the last band that was heavy to play before they started. The last band that was heavy to play was the Chili Peppers. That's when they really started to destroy everything. But before the Chili Peppers, it was us. We were the last, they, they started getting very, very rowdy when we were playing, and then within hours that place was on fire. They had throwing stuff at the buses and ripping everything apart, and they had, you know, we were guarded by cop cars and SWAT cars getting us off the, the premises. We didn't have a clue of how bad it really was. The talk for a while was, you guys just put on a Green Day or Nine Inch Nails type of concert at Woodstock because we were completely unknown really at that point to the masses. And in one minute it was taken away from us because everybody wanted to burn the place down. So then it reverted from Seven Dust just had a breakthrough show at Woodstock to everybody just burned Woodstock to the ground. Seven Dust has been touring in support of their recent release Time Travelers and Bonfires, wrapping up acoustic sets, but plugging back in for a slew of dates which wrap up in Sioux City, Iowa on August 23rd. So can I say good evening Woodstock 99? They said it's the last day of Woodstock.